Hey guys, just a few weeks back we attended a DJI Action 4 launch event and it was quite an experience. Different groups were assigned various activities and for our group we had the chance to visit the local aquarium. Now, an interesting choice for testing an action cam in a place with minimum action, but there's a method to the madness. The aim was to showcase its performance in low light conditions and I must say it succeeded quite impressively. So let's dive into the review. We'll go through the updates, the familiar aspects and the elements that truly deserve your attention. Starting with the aspect of similarity, we're looking at the tried and true design here, featuring the familiar two screens. Physically, it remains unchanged from an Action 3, maintaining the same dimensions and weight. It's actually my first time in the recent years using a modern action cam, and I was pleasantly surprised how bright the display was. Also, the small size was surprisingly convenient and made shooting content more satisfying, especially if you compare it to a phone. It's easy to hold and its compactness makes it simple to set up on various surfaces for unique angles. Let's address the significant alteration that justifies the label as the next generation action camera, the sensor. The new sensor is 1 over 1.3 inches in comparison to the Action 3 which was using 1 over 1.7 inch sensor. Such an increase in sensor size has a potential to elevate camera to an entirely new level. To put things in perspective, the GoPro Hero 11 employs a sensor measuring 1 over 1.9 which is nearly half the size of the new DJI Action 4 sensor. Before we delve into direct comparisons, let's tackle a fundamental question. What exactly does larger sensor signify? Having a larger sensor in action camera can mean a number of things. For example, things like better low light performance. A larger sensor can collect more light, which means it can produce better images in low light conditions. This is important for action cameras, which are often used to shoot in low light environments such as night or indoors. It can also provide greater dynamic range, with large sensor you can capture wider range of tones in an image, from brightest highlights to the darkest shadows. This means that your images can have more detail and less noise in both shadows and highlights. Also there's more shallow depth of field. A larger sensor can create shallow depth of field which means the background will be more blurred. This can be a great effect for portraits or action shots, where you want to focus on a subject and blur out the background. Generally videographers do prefer larger sensor. However, there are some potential pitfalls to having large sensor in a camera. For example, larger sensor usually requires more space to accommodate it. But as I mentioned earlier, DJ kept the dimensions of the camera the same. It normally also has higher price. Cameras with larger sensors tend to be more expensive. And that is the case here. Priced at $399 US dollars, the DJ Action 4 comes in as a more premium option compared to the Action 3. As of my current knowledge, GoPro has made an intriguing move by reducing the price of a Hero 11 Black to 350. One thing to note, the cost of a camera is just the beginning of investment as you will likely need to buy accessory bundle which includes batteries and a bunch of mounts. DJI stands out by offering a broader range of options on their order page compared to the GoPro. Nevertheless, both lineups have an abundance of third party accessories that can be considered down the line as well. Another common challenge is the potential for reduced battery life. A larger sensor typically demands more power to function, which can result in shorter battery longevity. However, DJI claims that they've maintained the same battery life as Action 3. This assertion raises questions about the validity of this claim, and if accurate, what compromise may have been necessary elsewhere. If we compare it head to head with Action 3, then there are some other improvements that include 10 bit D log M, as well as additional 2 meters of water resistance rating. Now you can dive up to 18 meters, which to be honest is professional depth, and you will most likely have plenty of other equipment, so having waterproof gates is probably still a good idea. We had a quick chance to compare the stabilization between Action 3 and Action 4. I went ahead and did side by side comparisons, and apart from picture quality, we didn't really see much difference. What do you guys think? When it comes to shooting in challenging conditions like low light, the Action 4 doesn't disappoint. The low light image enhancement makes a noticeable difference, producing cleaner shots in less than ideal lighting, even though it has a trade-off. As you can see in the shot on the right, there is significant reduction in noise, but there is also loss of texture, resulting in overall softer appearance. Personally, I might lean towards a more naturally grainy image that I could refine in post-production. Nevertheless, this option is beneficial for those aiming to enhance footage during their recording. For those who might be vlogging on these cameras or want to just use them on the go, here is the sample clips for audio indoors and outdoors. So this is an audio test while we are outside. 
and there's a pretty busy street above me so there's definitely quite a bit of noise um, let's see how the camera deals with this this is what you should expect from it recording indoors our studio is slightly sound treated but nothing too crazy as with almost any new device nowadays dji offers a complimentary app dji Mimo, and using your phone as a screen is very handy it's super convenient for framing shots and tweaking settings on the fly this seamless integration elevates the shooting experience in ways that I haven't anticipated. This is especially helpful when you have two people recording. Also, the invisible selfie stick feature in the DJI Mimo app is pretty cool. It gives your shots a natural perspective, as if the camera was just hovering on its own. The app uses AI algorithms to eliminate the selfie stick. For this, select album, then choose your file. Select trim and select the exact content you want to apply this feature to. Select it, then scroll through the options down below and find the Invisi Stick. Select it and then click Export button on top of the screen. It will send it to the cloud for processing. After a couple of minutes, depending on the length of your file that you're using, it will give you a pretty convincing disappearing act. Check it out for yourself. Now, right now we're having a bit of an overcast day and I am walking around with a selfie stick like a, a person of interest. It's, it's funky. It really is funky. But the main functionality here is it's really annoying when you want to get a nice shot and you're working alone and you need to use a selfie stick. But with the selfie stick itself, it's sticking out. So this way, what we can do is you can record yourself and go into settings after that, edit it and remove the selfie stick altogether. So hopefully this doesn't look too stupid when I edit it out. In general, it does get the job done, but as we all know, hands are still a pretty tricky subject for AI, so success may vary. Beyond just capturing moments, the DJI Action 4 proved to be an incredible training tool. Whether it is improving swimming techniques or refining other skills, the ability to review my moves in slow motion is a super useful aspect. It's one thing to be told you're doing something wrong, but seeing it in slow motion gives you a whole different level of understanding. The quick switch button is a feature that might seem minor, but it is also incredibly handy. Being able to rapidly switch between settings, all while getting audio prompts, streamlines the shooting process and keeps you in the moment. What's more, the protective housing allows you to capture vertical shots effortlessly. This is going to be appreciated by those doing TikToks or any other short form content. The fast charging case is also a standard feature, allowing you to quickly power up your camera. Plus, the fact that it can be used as a charger for other devices is a neat bonus. One area that could use some improvement is the digital zoom feature, as it is a bit awkward in practice. I wish they had implemented a standard pinch and zoom function. But here you need to poke the screen and then rotate the small wheel. It's a bit more user friendly in the app, so its usefulness might depend on how frequently you use this function. So here you have it, my comprehensive take on the DJI Action 4. It's a feature-rich camera that brings some seemingly small but important refinements. The convenience of using your phone as a screen, the incredible low-light capabilities and vertical shooting are just a few highlights. While there are still a few areas that could use improvement, the overall experience and capabilities of Action 4 are impressive and are definitely worthy consideration for anyone in the market for an action camera. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.